This lesson is a part of my plus two hour UiPath course. Find the entire course and the course materials in the description below. Lesson three is about variables. So click that lesson here and then scroll down the description. Here we need to create some variables and do some operations within it. I won't read this, I'll just show you and you'll need to replicate me. So again, have your UiPath open. This was our previous project and to create a new sequence because this was our first automation. I'm not sure that it's very smart to have the second automation in the end. You could of course have it, but let's create a new one. To do so, we can click the new up here and then we can choose sequence. We could call it something like variables and then we'll click create. So this one will be created in our project. Here we can see it, we have our main, that was the first robot, and then we have the variables. So this was the next sequence. If you want an overview of what sequences that you have created, we can go to project down here. Here you can see that we have our main and then we have our variables. So it's as easy as that. But let's create the variables workflow. First, we will have a right line that says something. So simply just search for a right line like this and drag it in. We want to type something in and what did we want to type in? Your name is and then your name. So what we do here is that we'll type this one in here. We go back to UiPath, then we'll put it in. Because it's a string that is text, then we'll have the quotation marks around it like we did in our first robot. So we do this and then I'll say Anas, put in your name like this. Now we click away and we can run it. We run the file and you will notice that nothing really happened or you'll think that nothing happened. But this right line, we can go down to output and observe. Here it is. Your name is Anas. A right line, we use that a lot when we develop these robots because it can type out their variables and it can type out their values and it's an easy way to see what's in it. Right now it's pretty easy to see it, but now you know. So we will, to minimize this output again, we can just click it again. So click it, open it, click it again to hide it. That's it. But now let me introduce variables. Because if we easily want to have this name changed, that could be to any other name, we could create a variable for that. The easiest thing to do is to go down to variables here. We can see that we have a variable manager. It's empty now, but we can create it. So we will call it str. This is just a prefix that will describe the variable type as you see here. Because we are creating a string, we will say str. Always with small letters. And then we can give it a meaningful name. I'll say name. So the prefix that says something about the type and then the name is, uh, that says something meaningful about the content. And here, since it's a name that we want to create, we call it str name. The variable type, we want to create a string, but we could choose plenty of other variable types. A string is simply just, in quotation marks, any kind of text. It could be numbers as well. The smart thing here is that we can use it for everything. We cannot do calculations with it unless we do some operations. So simply just store your text here. Always go with a string variable if you don't have a reason to it. And that is usually when you want to make calculations, then you won't do it with a, a string. The scope that is variables say that we have a sequence inside. Let me show you here like this. And then we can choose that the variable was only defined inside the inner sequence. So if we click the sequence uh, scope here, we can choose the sequence. And that is that we can only use it in here. It will get reset whenever we go past that sequence. It's useful when we want to have a clean and nice workflow. It's best practice, but don't worry. It will be on your advanced course. So let's change the scope back to variables and move the right line out. This was an advanced concept that I just want to show you. So now, because we want to use this variable up here, so we will, instead of this Anas, we will delete it. Make sure you still have the space like this. That's it. Then we will, to get a variable, go outside the quotation marks and then have a plus and then this variable's name. 
You can see that in this IntelliSense, we can see it here, SDR name, that's this one. You can choose it by double clicking. But say that you don't have this drop down, it could be really nice to have, couldn't it? You can just press control space, that is control space, you will have it. Choose the STR name, you can double click or tab it, and now we can run it. Do remember that the default is empty, so there will not be saying something. Let's try to run it. Here, we can go to output and we can see that it's blank. But let's fill something in. Say that I want to have Anas, like before. I just in quotation marks, type in Anas down here in the variables manager. I run the robot again. Like this, we can go to output and we can see that our name is Anas. Isn't that clever? So we use the variable. And now the smart thing come up. Because if I want to change this one here and have Jenny, for example, I can run the robot again. That's it. We go to output and we can see that this has now changed to Jenny. So a variable is simply just a container. We use it a lot. Always use variables if you have things that could change because then it's easy to update. Another cool thing around it is that say that we want to use this name a lot in our workflow, then we can just have this variable. And if this one change value, we don't, we only have to uh, change it down here in this variable manager. So far, so good. So now you learned about string variables, another type that is integer. So let's create an integer, create variable, an integer that is just a whole number, like one, two, three, four, five. So I'll call this int, and then we can say our number like this. In the variable type, choose an integer like this, and we can give it a default name. We could, for example, say 912. And it was only the strings that need to be in quotation marks. Every other variables will simply just be typed out like this. We can't really type this variable out because we are only allowed to type out um, strings. So we will need to convert it to a string. So if we go up here, let me delete what we have already wrote like this. Then we'll say int our number, press the tab to have it automatically filled in. Then we can say dot to string. This dot to string is something that you'll use a lot because when we want to print things out, we always go with the to string. Now we can see it here, we can run the file, it will print out our 912, we can see it in here like that. But say that we want to do a calculation with this integer, that's something we usually do. Say we want to add something to it, it's very easy to do. What we'll do here is that we'll click the three dots up here like this. Let me maximize it. You could, of course, edit it in here, but to have a more uh, larger view and a cleaner view, click the three dots up here in the properties text. Because now, before we convert it to a string, we will do an operations with it. So first, have parentheses around your integer. Say that we want to add five to it. We simply just say plus five like this. We could also multiply it. So multiply it with five. Let's do so. Then we'll click OK. Now let's run our robot. And if we go down to output again, you'll see that we have now multiplied with five. Isn't that clever? But you might say, Anas, I need some decimal numbers because all my database or Excel sheets, that's always in decimals. Sure, no worries. We can make an, a double. And a double is simply just a decimal number. We can say, dbl double and say our decimal number like this and then in the variable type we'll choose a double oh wait we can't find it well there's a good reason for it we just click browse for types here you will see a lot of variables well, don't worry i'm not using all these i think i use like 10 variables in my daily job as an rpa developer so don't worry so simply just search for a double, like this. Go down to the system that is MS Corlib here, 4.000, and choose this one. Then click OK, like this. So now we have a double. And then we can simply just type in a variable. 
And the decimal, that is always a dot. So if you come from a culture, I live in Denmark, and here we use a comma for the decimal, but be sure to make a dot as that is the notation we use in UiPath. So here I'll say 912.45. And we do the same thing as we do we did up here. So in our right line, we could either go uh, directly in here, or we can click the three dots here. What we'll do here is that we'll inside the parentheses, we can say dbl, and now I don't want to write this out. Remember, I can click control space to have this one show up. And because I wrote out dbl, this uh, variable is the only one that shows up. So I just double click it. And you could see it, say that the parentheses, they are redundant, but I'll use it in a second. So I'll let it be, it never hurts. So then I click okay. Now I will write out our double here. So I click run file, like this. I go to output and here I can see my double. That is a decimal. But again, we could choose to make all sorts of additions, multiplications, all that stuff to it. But I think you get it. It's the same way as with integers. So now we covered strings, integers and doubles. Another variable type that is booleans. So if I create a boolean called bul condition like this, and then on the variable type, I'll choose boolean. Again, you'll see that you find it up here, boolean. A boolean, that is a variable type that can hold two variables. It can either be true or false. It's that easy. If we are not specifying anything here in default, it will be false. So we can write that out exactly like we write out the numbers. So if I go up here, I can delete this. Then I can say bool condition like this, then dot to string. Again, we need the dot to string because it's not a string. We can write it out here. You will see that the value will be false. Like this, we go to output and it's false. We could easily change it either here in defaults by simply just writing out true then the value will now be true, or we can do something else because it will be false as default, but we can actually change that value here in the workflow. We can do that with an assign. So we drag it in the sign. And here we'll first have on the left side, we need to specify what value do we want to change. And that was the bool condition. So press control space, then find the bool condition that is here like this. What value do we want to change it to? Well, it's false down here, but now we want to have it as true, like this. We can run the file again. And now you'll see that we have a true here. That's it, it's that easy. We could change all variables. It's not uh, conditioned to uh, booleans. It will also be possible to change strings, integers, doubles, whatever. That's it. The boolean, true, false. Now our last variable type, that is data tables. That is a very exciting part and I need you to pay close attention because a data table, it looks very boring, but we will use it all the time when we do Excel automations, everything. So learn this. I'll delete this sign here like this. And now we'll create a data table, but we won't create it down here. We could of course also create a new variable and then choose the type to be a data table, but let's just not do it. You'll see that we have a variable one here. We could easily delete that by simply just right click and delete like that. Always delete variables you have no use for. But over here in activities, find a build data table like this, drag it in you'll see that this is empty too. In our data table wizard, click that. Here you'll see a data table. A data table is simply nothing else than an Excel sheet. An Excel sheet that exists only in the memory of our robot. So what we do usually with a data table is that we convert our Excel sheet into a data table to be able to do all sorts of advanced operations on it. Like this here. There's a default value here. I always delete it. I'm not sure why they will have these defaults. So delete everything. So you only have the plus and this cross. We will need to have two columns and then two rows of data. So click the plus here. I'll just say the first column will be named ID like this. Then I click the plus. The second one could be name. Then I click okay. 
It will be strings. Remember, we use strings a lot unless we don't have a reason to, even though that we work with numbers, because that's the most easy thing to store. That's the most easy thing to store variables. Then we need some data to fill in. This could just be one. Go over to the name, type in alpha. Now click enter and a new row comes up. We'll say two, you can say beta, like this. So a simple data table. It looks like your Excel sheet with columns and rows. Then we click OK. Because this data table needs to have a variable name attached to it, remember all these other variables had uh, the, va the values, they had a name attached to it. We also do it here. We could, of course, create it down here, or we can do something smarter. So in the output data table, click Control K, and then you can call it a name. I call it DT, my first data table, like this. Then I click Enter. When we press Control K over here in a variable field, then it will automatically create our variable down here. So it's a lot easier than to first fill in the name and then have to specify the type. Then we'll make sure that we don't make any mistakes because now we have chosen the data table. Say that I mistakenly created this one myself and choose an object. Now you'll see that we have an error. Oh, oh so let me go back to data table and I created a new variable here in their very speed I clicked. So delete it like this. So our data table is now here. We could do operations within it, but let's just print it out to our right line. To print out a data table, we need a output data table like this. Drag it in. Two things we need to type in. We need to have an input. The input that is just the data table that we want to print out like this. That will be the DT, my first data table, right? And then we want to output it to a string. So if we go up here, we can press Control K and we can say str our dt like this. You'll see that the variable will be created down here. And now you think that will be not enough. But actually this output data table is only the conversion from data table to a string. So if we want to write it out, we'll still need to use a write line. So let me delete it here. But because it's now a string, we can simply just type in str our dt like this. Let's try to run it. And let's just recap what actually happened here. We built a data table, we outputted it, that is converted it from a data table to a string, and then we wrote out that string. So we run the robot again, like this. We go to output, and here we can see that we have our data table. It looks like an Excel sheet, that is the column headers, and then we'll have the rows, that's it. Click the video to the left to go to the plus two hour UiPath course. Or click the video to the right if you want to learn the UiPath Re framework, which is essential if you're going to build UiPath robots.